Good evening, folks. Oh, that was my bench making a funny noise. I meant to do this video a couple of nights ago, but as, as always, life gets in the way, work, family, etc. So I'm taking the opportunity now. I've got a few few minutes to myself, so I'm going to do it now before, before it gets too dark out and I can't see what I'm doing. So, first, first thing, bit of news, as you all probably seen on Sunday morning, Bo Mack, the uh, trainer of Chris Eubank Jr. this past weekend, and obviously trainer of uh, Terence Crawford, was arrested at Manchester Airport on Sunday morning, I believe, uh, because he was carrying a concealed gun, which I believe was loaded, and he could face some time in jail. Um, it's not looking good for him. Now, I know any Americans who are watching this, um, it might seem a bit alien to you, you know, the gun gun laws here, because we don't have guns. We, well, we do have guns, but they're not such a big thing here, and it's actually illegal to carry guns. I think you can have guns if you live in the country. You've got um, um, you go shooting, hunting, things like that. You can carry them then, but you have to have a license for them, obviously. But gun crime isn't really a thing here. Instead, we have stabbings over here, so. You know, we've got a diff whole different kind of problem. I mean, I live in a very small town in Hampshire, and we have stabbing problems here all the fucking time, uh, even here in this little town. So it's worse in London and places like that. So anybody watching this who lives in London, you know, or any of the big city cities, you know exactly what I'm talking about. We don't have gun problems here. We have fucking knife problems here. So, but obviously, that's neither here nor there. So I, I I just find it odd because Bo, he, Bo Mac must have brought it in to England in the first place. So why wasn't it picked up then? You know, when he brought it in, why wasn't it detected? Because surely they x-rayed his luggage like they do everything else. I don't, I don't really understand that. Um, there's a few conspiracy theories going around. I, I tend not to get too involved in conspiracy theories. I enjoy a good conspiracy theory, but... I'm not really, doesn't really fucking interest me. So we'll uh, just watch this space, see what happens with Bomac. Really, it's a shame, really. You know, because he's a very good trainer. I mean, a lot of people criticise and take the piss out of him. You know, Big Mac, they call him and things like that. I, and I've called him that myself because he's a big lad. He's a very big lad. And he struggles to get in the ring sometimes. And it's a bit like, oh God, you know, mate, sort yourself out. But obviously he's a very good trainer, uh, psychology wise, especially. So, yeah, so that, that, that's on that. Another bit of news that intrigued me I saw last week was uh, Manny Pacquiao, the wonderful Filipino, six-weight world champion, eight if you include the ring magazine. A lot, a lot of people like to die on that hill. Oh, it's eight-weight divisions, eight-weight divisions. I mean, which is fine, but if you're talking about official, recognised, sanctioning bodies, world titles, it's six. Because the Ring magazine isn't really, it's not a, a sanctioning body. It's a magazine that hands out belts to the people that they think are the best in their divisions, essentially. So, no wrong, I appreciate it and I understand that to win the Ring magazine title, it means a lot to a, to a lot of fighters. But it's not, it's not an official sanctioning body. So, if you recognise it and you really want to die on that hill, then yes, it's eight with the two ring magazine belts he won. But if you're going by official of the big four um, sanctioning bodies, it's six. But anyway, that's, uh, that's, I've gone off, off script as usual. He wants to end his career by competing at the 2024 Olympics in Paris next year. And he's with the goal of finishing his whole boxing career at the age of 45 with an Olympic gold medal. Now, although I appreciate the sentiment and I, I, I see where he's coming from and I totally understand it, I personally don't think he should. I think he's too old. He's had his career. He's had a wonderful career. He's made millions of dollars. He's broken all kinds of... You know, he, he's beaten so many people. He's won so many world titles, like I say, in the six, weight, six official weight divisions. Leave it. He's 45 years old, mate. Leave it. I mean, who am I to tell anybody what to do with their life? But this is just my opinion. If you don't agree with me, that's absolutely fine. I say we're all entitled to our own opinion. But he 
he, I don't know, if he if he gets a spot on the Olympic team, he's taken, a, in my opinion, he's taken away a spot from a young, a young, potentially young upcoming star from the Philippines, who could have that spot, and who could, uh, you know, potentially go on and make a name for himself at the Olympics, and it'd be a launch pad for him. Pacquiao's already had his career. He's made his name. He's done his thing. Um, so, I mean, I, I've never, I, I, I never really agreed with professionals being allowed in the Olympics anyway. But that's just my opinion. You know, who, who, who the fuck am I? Who gives a shit? What I think, right? But as soon as they, they did that, was it two Olympic games ago? I thought, no, nah, we're, we're making a mistake here. But because it, it should have always been purely for. Amateurs, in my opinion, I know like, the basketball and the tennis at the Olympics. You had professionals doing it, so I can see the argument. But personally, I think Pacquiao should stay away because, or well, another option, the thing thing that could happen is Pacquiao go in there, age forty five, and get completely shown up and outboxed by some young kid. You have to excuse that fucking dog. Every time I sit out here, it fucking barks. And it drives me fucking insane. Fucking animal. Yeah. Every time. This is the second time I've tried to do this video tonight and that fucking thing keeps going off. Oh, he's gone a bit quiet now. Um, yeah, he could get totally shown up or potentially knocked out by some young up-and-coming up kid. And how embarrassing would that be for the guy? You know, this fucking legend getting outboxed, beaten, potentially embarrassed by some young kid at the Olympics. So... There you go. We'll see. We'll see if it actually happens, though. And the other bit of news. Now, everybody who's seen a few of my videos knows I, I detest the WBA. I have done for a long time with this stupid two champions bullshit, the regular title and the super title in every division. It causes confusion with the fans. It's hard to follow. Even people like myself who follow it minutely get confused. And they started consolidating the titles, which has been working out so far. And then two weeks ago, when Alexander Usyk beat Daniel Dubois, we were all under the impression that that would unify the super title and the regular title, and there would only be one WBA heavyweight champion, which would be Alexander Usyk. Not even a week later, the WBA announced that they had reinstated Mahmoud or previously known as Manuel Char, as its WBA regular champion because he's brought on some sort of uh, litigation or some bullshit. And I thought, what the fuck's going on? So I did a bit of research, and yeah, I remember he won the, the, the WBA regular title back in 2017, I believe. And so what's that, six years ago? And then he never defended the fucking thing. He sat and he, and he didn't fight for three and a half years. So they took it off him. I think Trevor Bryant ended up with it. He ended up losing it to Dubois and then D Dubois lost it to Usyk a couple of weeks ago. And I'm just like, when I looked at his recent record, I think he had a fight last year, I believe. Char, that's Char this is. And it was, he's not beaten anybody decent he's had two hips replaced he's a year younger than me so he's getting on a bit boxing wise and in my opinion he was never that fucking good anyway very brave don't get me wrong very brave but my my memories of him are getting sparked out cold by Alexander Povetkin and getting a paste in from Vitaly Klitschko in Klitschko's last fight in 2012 before he retired so why is this guy having any kind of claim to the WBA title? Because what's he going to do? Fight fucking Usyk? Usyk's not going to fight him. Why would he? Usyk only wants Fury. Fury's tied up with this ridiculous fight against Francis Ngannou that I'm not interested in. Some people are, whatever, I don't care. But it's not boxing. The only thing I could see happening, and I really hope I'm wrong, but I know how it works. Is Fury will fight him next after Ngannou. He'll fight Char, win the regular title, and then crow about how, oh yeah, he's the best heavyweight in the world. He's got the WBA and WBC titles, even though it's a regular title. Yeah, I can just fucking see it. I can just see it, and ugh. I'll tell you what, it fucking makes me sick. It really does. It fucking pisses me off. 
So I'm just confused about the whole thing, really. I thought, hang on, what? one minute they're consolidating the belts, now they've reinstated a guy who didn't defend the title and didn't fight for three years while he was champion, supposedly. They've just given it back to the guy. And, uh, for fuck's sake, I don't know, it's boxing for you again. Well, that's enough out of me. Hope you're all doing well. Hope you all have a good week. I'm going to finish this smoke, take the dog for a walk. And I hope life's treating you all well, and I'll speak to you soon. Take care, folks.